There is a very strong warning in the scripture concerning the book of Revelation. Very, very strong warning. I'm surprised that this was not placed at the beginning of the book of Revelation. Not sure why it was put at the end. Um, but I want to talk to you about this, uh, the book of Revelation being opened. Um, the opening up of this book. Now, when you have the privilege and also... I want you to understand that the book of Revelation can be a blessing and it can be a curse. It's a two-edged sword. If you open the book of Revelation with the wrong attitude, with the wrong spirit, the wrong motive, the book of Revelation can become a curse to you and never opened uh, to where you understand it, but opened only for your judgment. Now, now is the time to understand the book of Revelation or to understand the truth before it's revealed. You don't want to wait till the book of Revelation is revealed as far as the manifestation of it. You want to understand these things uh, before they come to pass. And when I'm speaking of these things, I'm not speaking of everything in the book of Revelation. I'm speaking of God's judgment, I'm speaking about the, the seals uh, that are now sealing this book. Now, you go and you read the book of Revelation and most of it you say, I don't, I don't understand it. If you're like most of us, it's a difficult book to understand. Well, the book of Revelation was never meant to really be understood as far as you and I being able to uh, say, okay, this, is, this, is, this means this and, and, and understand everything perfectly. No, the book of Revelation is beyond just type on a page. It's beyond just a book of type. You know, it's beyond words as far as written down on a page. This is the revelation that John saw concerning Jesus Christ. This is the revelation that Jesus Christ is the eternal Son of God. He is God. And yet to be revealed or made manifest to where all the world will know the truth. Today they say that Jesus is not the Son of God. The majority today say Jesus is not the Son of God. That he was just one of the many uh, teachers that came down to this earth to teach men. No, it's not true. He always was. No beginning, no end. He has always been. He was before Satan or before Lucifer. He created Lucifer. Are you listening to what I'm saying to you? I hear people say all the time, well, where did God come from? See, Satan knows if he can get you thinking that way, then you don't look at God as being supreme. You don't look at God as being the foundation to life. That he is the source of life. That he is the beginning. He is the beginning. Jesus said, I am the Alpha. And I'm also the end. So, God in his plan has made provision for you and I to be in between Alpha and Omega. Somewhere in between. And this book of Revelation is the revelation of the truth. And when I say the truth, I mean that which is reality. And there is a strong warning. And I still don't understand, God, why didn't this warning, why wasn't this warning put at the beginning? When people first open the book, I would think this would be at the beginning of the book. Why was it laid at the end? Why? At the beginning, all it says is, blessed is he that readeth this book. But at the end of the book, it says, 
in Revelation chapter 22, and beginning with verse 18, and this is John saying this, For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book. If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. And if any man shall take away from the words of this book, of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Why wasn't that put at the beginning? Right? As a disclaimer. This is what you may, we may actually call the fine print. You know, today you, you, buy something or purchase something and you don't take the time to read the fine print. Well, this is a contract. This is an agreement. And you and I must take the time to read the fine print. Why it was put at the back of the book, I have no understanding why God put something so serious at the end. Dear God, why was it placed at the end, Lord? I remember one time I asked the Lord when I was looking at the armor that Paul spoke of and it says prayer was last on the list and I said to God, I said, Lord, why did you put prayer last? I would think it would be first. And the Lord spoke to me and he said, it's all about perspective. It's your perspective. You're looking from the top down. He said, I didn't put prayer last. He said, I put it first. All the time we look, we, most times we look at the top to the bottom, but God wants to get us to humble ourselves. He wants us to see from the bottom up. Amen? And so God put prayer first on the list for the armor. You can't put on the armor of God without prayer. I used to say that prayer was the foundation. But you can't say that because prayer is really not the foundation unless that prayer is in the Holy Ghost. Then you can say it's the foundation. But understand that Jesus Christ is the foundation. So you can't really say prayer is the foundation unless you've gone from where you have a, uh, you know, where you pray to a place where you, it's a prayer life, where it's your very life, where prayer becomes your very breath, where you can't breathe without praying. Now you're breathing the breath of heaven. Now you're live. Now you're breathing and intaking and you're exhaling the breath of heaven. I have experienced. The breath of God, people. I know what it is to literally breathe celestial air. I have, done, I have been there in the Holy Ghost where I knew that I was no longer breathing oxygen on this earth. And I knew in my spirit that I was living. Paul said, in him we live, we move, we have our being. Now, just as there's physical uh, lightning, physical thunder, physical uh, uh, rain, there's spiritual. Just like there's a physical storm, there's a spiritual storm. And that storm's coming, people. And with that storm of God's judgment, God's wrath, there's a great rain coming the latter rain. And it shall be greater than the former rain. But it's going to be the former rain, the latter rain together. And if you haven't already received the former rain, you can't receive the latter rain because it's the former rain that prepares you for the latter rain. 
They, the, the former rain comes when the seed is sown. The latter rain comes to bring the seed to fruition. And there's a lot of folks that haven't even received the, the former rain, Pentecost, to prepare the seed to even get started. Now, if I take, I've got some pepper seeds here in the house that I've been drying out. If I take those and put them in the ground, it's not going to grow. I've got to start those seeds. I've got to put them inside a, a paper towel and wet it down inside a milk carton or something and just keep it until it sprouts. Once it sprouts, then I can put them in the ground. Well, that's what the Pentecost was all about. Pentecost was the sprouting was the, to get the sprout, to get the start. So if God could do what he did at Pentecost with just the that uh, earnest of the Spirit, the earnest of the inheritance, what can God do in these last days with those that have been prepared for the latter rain, for the fullness? Not talking about sprouting, not talking about little plants. We're talking about coming to Full fruition. Trees of righteousness. Planted by the rivers of living water. Fullness. Paul said we've received the earnest until the fullness. Now when God spoke, the people were so scared they thought they were going to die. They didn't want to hear his voice anymore. In the New Testament, when God spoke, some heard it thunder. Jesus heard his Father speak. Jesus said, this voice didn't come from me. Not, I, I didn't need to hear his voice. I hear his voice without the thunder, because I know him. Some know God by a, st a, a small, still voice. God does not speak in a thunder to try to scare people. He will speak in an audible voice to get our attention. And that's what he was doing. Now, the voice that came, that was heard that day, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear ye him. And this happened more than once. Um, that voice, Jesus said, did not come from me. Now, some said an angel. It was an angel. And we're in an, an hour when the devil's trying to get the world caught up in angels. Satan hates God. The God of this world has blinded the minds of the people. And only those in this hour that are growing to the measure, the stature, the fullness of Christ, coming into sonship, coming into the fullness, sons, many sons, like his own son, sonship. Only they are going to understand fully the plan of God. Understand what God is doing. Jesus said, I do only what I see the Father doing. And so the sons of God in this hour are watching the Father. Watching what he's doing. Where is he going? What's the direction he's going in? And then Jesus said, I only judge as I hear. And so there are those that are being prepared, that are learning. Don't speak your own words concerning judgment. You don't take it into your own hands. You don't judge situations with your own wisdom. You don't lean to your own understanding. You lean on God and His wisdom speaks forth. God is the one that makes the decisions for your life and for those under you. If you take it into your own hands and think you have a right to make decisions for other people... I remember I used to say to my pastor all the time, I'd say, what's God's will for me, pastor? And he'd say, I don't know. Well, I wanted to hear what God's will was for me. And I thought he should know. God never revealed to my pastor what it, what, why does God do that? Because God doesn't want you following a man. 
Remember what Peter said to Jesus? 